Hi everyone and welcome back to Chess for Charity. In this video, I'm going to show you an amazing puzzle that some engines have a hard time figuring out. So take stock of this position here. It's white to move. Currently black's pieces are all kind of bunched up, unable to move. You see these white pawns blocking off some key squares. This rook is currently guarding against checkmate on the side of the board. And this pawn is going up the board like this. So it's white to move and see if you can find the best move. I'll give you a moment to see if you want to try to find it. If not, feel free to watch the video. And while you're here, please be sure to subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Okay, so you might think, what's wrong with just promoting to a queen? Is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? Turns out that's actually not winning for a couple of reasons. Most notably, rook g1. And the idea here is I'm going to give up the rook and stalemate myself. So, just as an example, if white goes ahead and plays rook takes h2, then rook takes g4 is going to lead to stalemate. Because if you capture, these pawns are blocking off the king and the pawns. Okay. Well, of course, I didn't have to capture this. I could have captured here. But then I'd be losing because that's a queen, right? So just kind of be mindful of that. Okay, so this rook g1 resource to go after stalemate, that's something I'm going to have to keep my eye on. So if I promote to a rook, does that change anything? Well, not really because it's still rook g1. And how do I stop rook takes g4 stalemate? You might think push the pawn. No, because then... I might be in trouble if I'm not careful here. They're going to move their rook, push their pawn. The only winning, not winning, the only saving move here is this. Maybe something like this. Take here, right? Okay, so the point that you have to realize pretty quickly, and I'm going through this part fast because the key is later on, is you have to promote to a knight. Now, why a knight? Well, let's make sure that's clear that you can't take, just like when the queen was here or the rook was here. Black can't take, because if they ever take, I have this mate on the side of the board, right? In case that wasn't clear. But why the knight, you might wonder. Well, the knight, because of the way it moves, is in a nice position to threaten checkmate. So let's just say, for example, I try rook g1 again. Remember how before, that was the idea. Now I have a bit of flexibility here with my knight and maybe one day, if I'm lucky enough, I can maneuver my knight into d6 and b7 to give checkmate to the king. But not right now. And you might wonder, why not right now? So remember, if I go for this, the key resource that they have is this stalemate trick, right? And if I try to avoid the checks, maybe I try to run up the board, it doesn't matter. You're gonna keep checking me. And no matter what I do, if I go back, this will be a draw. But if I go up the board, they just keep checking me. That's going to be a draw. And I can't ever take it because of stalemate. Right? Okay, so I can't go in for this knight d6 move immediately. And this is what makes this puzzle so interesting. In this position, there's one winning move. And it's mate in 20-something. It's king h5. Now what's the point of this? Well, remember, we're trying to combat against this stalemate. So if they take here, what's the difference? Well, obviously, taking here was not a check, so they give me that square. So this king move allows white to get free without a check. That's kind of a nice detail. So now what does black have to do here? It seems like I have to just move in the back rank. I can't go up the board because no move with check will work because there is no move with check. So what do you do? Well, remember the threat is here, here, mate. But you can't even really defend that threat. So if you go rook d1 saying, hey, I'm going to go here. Keep in mind, if they go here, just make sure this is really clear, you don't take this because that's not a threat. Instead, you go right up to d5. Look at this. And now, this check that we were just talking about, I can't give mate. I have to move the king. 
I have to move the king somewhere, and now it's going to be the same stalemate trap that black was setting in one move prior. So notice the differences here. Notice the little details. So after the rook, we can say, goes to d1, e1, f1, c1, they're all the same. It should be said that if you take, then you can't stop this because you can't give up the rook and stalemate the pawn in one move. So no matter what you do, that's going to be mate, right? That's a nice mate. So let's look at any of these rook moves. Like I said, they're all about the same. Let's look at d1. So rook d1, what do you do here? They're threatening to stalemate themselves, right? They're going to give you check, and then you're going to have to move your king, and then they're going to just sack the rook for nothing to give stalemate. So what's the key? Well, now you actually block the check. How cool is this? You block this potential check with the move g5. This is incredible. So now what's the point? The point is that if they were to go here, it's no longer with check. That gives up this back a1 square. That's mate. Okay, so now what? Well, what, what we just did here, we're going to go right back. Rook g1. What am I threatening? I'm threatening to sack this rook for the pawn. Interesting, right? Now, what does this king do? Want to take a guess? They go up the board. Notice the pattern happening here. So what does this rook do? Well, they want to come back this way and try to give check to stalemate themselves. This is really cool. Hope you're seeing the pattern here. I'm kind of walking this pawn up and the king up one little square at a time. Okay, so any other move doesn't really work here. If you go rook c1, what do you do? Just knight d6. Like, come on, I'm going to mate you. And you want to try to defend this? Yeah, you do defend that, but remember, you can't leave the back rank. Anytime you leave the back rank without check, that's going to be checkmate. Okay. So you pick one of these squares. Again, they're all pretty much the same. Let's say, I don't know, d1 again with the idea of trying to give up. It would be with check. So what do you do if you're white? Well, remember, it's the same exact pattern. The, gre the, the goal, the threat rather, is to check on d6 and then give up the rook. So, sorry, d6. So white plays g6, saying, okay, go ahead. If you go here, it's not with check, I can mate you on a1. Okay, do you see the pattern here? Rook g1 now. Same thing, notice this back and forth and back and forth. So what's the difference? Well now, again, the goal is to sack the rook for this pawn, have you seen the pattern? And give stalemate. So what does the king do? The king goes up the board. Notice that the king goes up the board and not down the board because if they go down, the rook can give check right here. Right, make sure you're paying attention to that detail. Okay, now they're going up the board. So how is this going to end, you might wonder? So same idea, we'll go back to d1 or c1 or e1. Doesn't really matter in this case. Okay, now, do I play this move? Well, remember, you have to always be afraid of the check that could happen here. So d1 actually leads to a faster mate for white because after knight d6, there's no check, which means the best that white can do is what, give up the rook and then get mated? Doesn't really matter. So let's actually go to e1 instead, just to show the full variation. So now, again, the threat is check and then give up the rook. So what do you do? Well, as white, just like before, hopefully you're seeing the pattern, g7. So now if they were to take, again, that's mate, they can't move to e7 with check. They can't. Okay, so now we go back to g1. Right? Why g1, you might say? Well, you're kind of blocking everything up. You're threatening to give yourself up for the pawn. Now here's where it gets kind of fancy. Just like before, now you're in the corner. Look at this. So if they give themselves up, again, that's not with check, I would mate you on the back. So what do they do? Again, you can either go to f1, c1, or e1. If you go to d1, you can actually give mate in the same way I was describing a couple minutes ago. So let's go to e1. Why not? Okay, now what's the difference? Now look. 
I promote this pawn with a, to a queen, rather. And what does this mean? Well, if I take here, again, it's not with check, so that would give up mate. So what do I do? I go back to g1. Now, here's what's so cool about this puzzle. There, well, there are so many things that are cool about this puzzle. Now, this queen is essentially the thing that has to get captured, but doesn't have to get captured with check. So you can leave it right here. Queen g7, saying, if you take me, you're giving up the back rank. And you always want to be careful not to stalemate. So look at the way that this is teetering back and forth. Well, the best for black, the fastest, I guess I should say the most resistance they can put up, is going back to either f1, e1, or c1. Okay, now how is this going to end? How does it work? So let's go back to e1. What's the point? Well, now you're threatening to check. And you see where this is going? You're threatening to check and then give up your rook. So look what happens. The king goes back down the board. So now, if you take this, you give up this mate. This is amazing. So what do you do if you're the white pieces? Well, oh, sorry, it's black's move. But after g1, rook g1, what do you do? Same thing. You move down one square at a time. I'm going to go through this ending a little bit faster because I kind of get the feeling you get the point. Rook e1. I'm going to threaten to give mate or to give a check and then stalemate. Okay, well, that's fine. King h6. They go back to g1, saying, I'm going to give up the rook here then. That's fine. Queen g5. What, what is happening here? Rook e1. Same idea. I'm threatening to give up the rook for nothing and stalemate myself. King h5. How is this going to end, you might wonder? This is amazing. Rook g1 again. Now what? Same idea. Queen g4. Okay, let's just keep going back and forth. Rook e1. How is this going to end, you might wonder. Again, how many times have I said that? King h4. Okay, rook g1 again. Do you see how this cycle is repeating? Queen g3. Okay, rook e1. I'm going to give up the check here. I'm going to give up my rook. What are you going to do about it? So, in this position, after queen, sorry, after rook to e1, the best move, according to the computer, is knight d6 with this threat of going here. But I want to make sure I address what happens. Let me go back. Sorry about that. What happens if this is a check? So in this case, king h3, I want to make sure I'm comprehensive here. If they give this up, now I can walk to g2, and there's nothing you can do to stop this mate. Okay, okay. I want to make sure I'm seeing all the variations here. So after this, yeah, after I go to queen g3, if they go back to f1, c1, or e1, d1, pretty much any of these back squares, it's going to be the same result. So after knight d6, the point here is you can't give up this with stalemate because now I have this out square. So this pawn that was a pawn a while ago, went up, 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 up the board, became a queen, and then walked right back down the board, and that caused the king to allow itself to come back down the board. We'll use different color. Like that. So, rook h4, and after king g2, you cannot stop mate on the back rank. So the best that black has, I don't know, rook h3. This is mate. This is mate. <laughs> Not that way. This is mate, if I can draw good arrows, and that's mate. Pick your favorite mate. I would say this one, personally. This is an amazing puzzle. I just really want to understand all the details. Let me go all the way back just for a moment. So why is this different now? Just make sure it's clear. If I do this now, and let's say I went this way instead, is this going to be the same result? No. The computer is saying rook f1 is going to be a draw. Why rook f1 is going to be a draw? See, this is my thing. The computer is not right because this is not a draw. King h4 and I win. Look at this. You can tell. Well, you can't tell. I'm seeing the computer engine as I'm looking at this position because it's a little too complicated for me to figure out on the fly here. But look at this. After 
I promote to a knight, and they play rook g1, I was questioning whether or not I have to do this advance with the king. So if I went the other way, king h3, this is a draw because I have this rook g3 check. Whereas in the end variation, this same position is flipped around a little bit. Let me go to that variation if I can find it really quickly. Give me one moment. If I can find this. So instead of the pawn being here and trapping my king here like this, now my pawn, which is now the queen after all these promotion squares, after all these squares, is back on g3. So the reason why this fails is because now if I go here, look at, look at how crazy this is. This move doesn't do anything. This is amazing. Just like I'm, I'm seeing this real time. Hopefully you're able to see that. But this is an incredible puzzle because you're pretty much able to see in real time how this puzzle works. The king is going up the board, which allows the pawn to go up the board. And then they come back down the board just to have this configuration where now it's black to move and they can't give up the queen for nothing or the, the rook for nothing. Wow. So even if they make the same move, that same passing move, knight d6, threatening mate, and now this check doesn't result in anything different because I have this. And if they ever try to check me here, I go away and I'm going to give mate on one of these squares. Wow, this is amazing. Hopefully that was somewhat informative to you. I just love this puzzle. I saw it and it's just, you can tell as I'm going through it, it's so complicated. And I hope you're able to play around with it on your own. I'll have the position in the description if you want to. But that's it for now. Please be sure to like and subscribe. I put new videos out all the time. And the whole goal is to help spread the amazing game of chess and help out charity. That's it for now. Thanks so much. Bye. <music>